What's one of the questions we get asked a lot? Questions we get asked a lot. We get asked a lot about the stuff that we use, like how do we monitor humidity or control humidity? Mm -hmm. um, a question that I've been getting asked a ton lately is how many animals we have. So I thought it would be fun to do a little video on how many animals we have and why we keep the amount of animals we keep. Oh, I see. So there was a correct answer to your question and I got it wrong. Yep. Okay. <laughs> So this week's horribly edited video is going to be all about the number of animals we keep and why we keep the number of animals we keep. Um, this is one of them. This is Law. She's a boa imperator. She is going into shed and still wanted to come out and hang out. Not sure why. She's a weirdo. So uh, let's talk about it. Let's start with the facts. How many animals do we have? Well, how many snakes do we have? How many snakes do we have? We have 21 snakes. 21 snakes. And then we have Indy, our rhino iguana. Mm -hmm. Frankie or leopard gecko. Two lizards. Two lizards. And we also have two dogs and a cat. And? And two humans. And, and a tarantula. And a tarantula. And a tarantula. One invert. <laughs> that is not counting the isopods. I was about to say, are we counting, are we counting all of the isopods? Because no, because we can't. Many colonies of those. <laughs> so breaking it down for the snakes, what, what does that look like? Well, it looks like one big wall of retics right here. So the majority of those 21 snakes are indeed retics. We have two, three, four, five, six sub-adult adult reticulated pythons. They're all dwarf, super dwarf. We don't have any mainlands. And then 10 of those retics are... Babies. Babies from when we paired Stella and Aries last season. So the babies are around six months old. They were born May 11th. Um, so yeah, they'll, they'll be just a almost exactly six months old by the time this video drops. And then, oh, so retic, 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 retic. This is the wall of retic. Um, we also have <clears throat> the nursery. So this is where the babies reside. They just ate last night. So they're either out basking or curled up nice and cozy. So those are babies. And then we also have in this room our scrub python cogs. Hi, buddy. And then what else we got? Well, also in this room we have Indy down there. Well, we have Indy in here. We're talking about the snakes. Oh, still on snakes. Still on snakes. And then we have three species of boa. Mm -hmm. So we have a boa. We have two BIs, boa imperators. This one, this is our female uh, law. She's a sub-adult. Uh, she is a IMG labyrinth. Pet VPIT Paws Snow. And then we have Tweak, who is our blue eyed dragon boy. He's a VPIT Paws Snow. And then we have our Colombian Rainbow Boa, Ivy. She lives in here. She's about to get an upgrade soon, which I'm very excited about. And Ivy, she likes to hide that. Oh, hello, your face is right there. Hi, sweet girl. She's very sweet. She's a little shy, but she's very sweet. And then we also have a sub adult. Brazilian rainbow boa. She's currently upstairs and will be moving down here also very soon, also as soon as she gets an upgrade, which we are also very excited about. Yep. So it's pretty rare that we bring a new animal into our little family. Um, we really, we keep larger constrictors, right? We keep retics, like again, so dwarf super dwarf, so they are comparatively smaller than mainlands, but they still get decently sized and they are very active interactive snakes so they we do like to offer them as much space as possible and in order to do that well we have to map out kind of ahead of time adult enclosures so that really limits us in terms of any new animals we're bringing in or pairings that we're doing and things of that nature so in terms of upgrades um, this is Law's house right now which is definitely getting too small for her. Ivy lives in a four by two by two, and then Twee lives in a six by two by two. And then our subadult retics, Centauri's on the top, Chahai is in the middle, Shai is on the bottom. Um, they're all in four by two by twos. So the plan. Plan is starting with the boa wall, 
um, what we are going to do, and it's one of the things that limits us here, is actually the height of the room, because it's about a seven foot ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, so what we figured out is exactly kind of the height that we could um, get custom tanks made, where we can stack them and really maximize the climbing space that the animals have. Yeah. So, so what we, what we decided on was what three and a half feet. 40 inches. 40 so inches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So three and a half feet. So something that's really helpful is watching the animal's behavior. So Twee, Ivy, La, all three of them really enjoy climbing. So we are going to give them a lot more height. So still the upgrades, the, these are all Toad Ranch upgrades mm -hmm. and they're still, we did six feet, right? Um, six feet wide, 40 inches tall. Did we do a little bit deeper? Yeah, we did 30 inches deep. 30 inches deep. Yeah. So one of the things that's really good to keep in mind when you are getting into snakes and looking at adding snakes, especially prior to your snakes being full grown, it's really thinking ahead on the layout of the space that you currently have. Um, when we moved to this place, we moved from a row home, which was much smaller, and we had Ivy, Twee, Aries, and Shy at that point. Um, and I was unwilling to get any more animals until we actually had moved into a space that would allow for expansion for any other animals that we would bring into the house. So the plan is to, we'll be moving my desk. Um, I'm gonna get a new desk and put it by the window over there. We'll move the plant wall somewhere out of the plant shelf, somewhere else. Um, <laughs> she just ate last night, so she's like, yummy. She's actually going to be moving upstairs into the dining room where Cogs used to be. Indeed. Because so, we got her a new... Yeah, we ended up, um moving Cogs down here because we wanted to have a little bit quieter space for him yep. to kind of socialize him a little bit more. There's so a, yeah, and there's I, there's a link to a video talking all about that. that right. I can link. Yep. And then Centauri, we decided to move upstairs. Um, number one, just because um, we've got a fairly sizable wall in our dining room that we can use for, for a decent sized tank. And number two is because Centauri of these three sub-adults is the largest and she's also a very sweet social animal. Um, and so we thought she would be a good fit for living upstairs, right? Like the, the idea there being there's two dogs and a cat that run around upstairs. We've got robo bats that run occasionally yeah. people walking the, through. The busyness won't yeah. stress her out like it did cogs. Right. Um, Karen? Oh, sorry. Uh, right. So essentially because she's a little bit more outgoing and chill, um, that that busyness won't be a stressor the way it was for Cogs, and um, and also she's you know she's super pretty. She'll be a nice addition to the dining room. She will. So space is a big part of why we keep the number of animals we keep. Now, twenty one snakes is going to sound like a lot to some people, not as many to others. Um, so Chaya shed last night right after she ate, but you can see they're all getting way too big for these four by two by twos. So. We are, we actually got expansion kit. So she's, Centauri's moving upstairs to a bigger house. Um, Jahia and Shy and Cogs actually are going to get expansion kits, which I'm super excited about. So we got two expansion kits from Toad Ranch for the side panels. So Shy and Jahia, um, they're gonna get expanded into eight by two by twos. So not as much height as I would like them to have in their like fully grown enclosures, but definitely an improvement. And then Cogs is going to get a ceiling conversion kit. So he'll get moved into a four by four by two. So Arboreal needs more height. Um, again, it won't be his permanent size, but it's definitely an upgrade from what he's in right now. Do you have any idea where Centauri's Govi is? Because she managed to break that bracket and now it's gone again. <laughs> Where'd you put it? How do you always do this to your goby? Why do you hate your goby so much? She's pleading the fifth. She's like, I don't know what you speak of. All right, so so again, we can preach this until the cows come home, but our, our biggest reason for keeping the number of animals that we keep is just limits of size, but also, and he's been feeling this pretty hard the last few weeks because I've been traveling a ton, is the, the time that we like to invest in interacting and caring for the animals. Something that we really try to focus on a lot is how much socialization our animals get. Um, in addition to just being pets, they are um, ambassador animals. And, you know, obviously 
the babies that we have could go to you know some other forever home and the more that we are able to socialize with them and get them really used to um, interacting with people the better that experience will be for their their future homes yep another thing that I find to be really valuable in interacting with the animals a lot is when it comes to things like medical treatments or like Cogs had a little bit of substrate like uh, stuck in between his chin and being able to work with them at a much lower stress level regardless of what's going on is just it's easier on us it's way easier on them so yeah it definitely makes it easier what about expenses <laughs> um so i mean I, I would say that uh the the initial tank setup is is definitely the biggest hit um so we think a lot about you know again when we bring an animal into our home you know we might put them like La is currently this was essentially her quarantine tank when when she first came home and um, and this is what she stayed in and, and is due for an upgrade now. But when, we, when we're bringing an animal home, we think in terms of how old are they now, what are we about to put them in, and how soon are they going to grow out of that space, and we're going to need to get them something better. And better and bigger. I actually cut off that last little bit. Um, and that's our approach to keeping. We keep our animals in very large. Toad <laughs> Ranch, that was his nudge that he wasn't in sometimes i like to photo bomb videos that i'm actually already in it's weird is that what you were doing <laughs> okay um that actually makes more sense so yeah we keep animals in very large enclosures um we prefer toad ranch brand because it is a it's a deeper investment up front but it is they'll last you so enclosures are a big chunk in terms of upfront investment in caring for animals. Again, you can do it much more affordably than how Jody and I do it, just depends on your preference. And uh, what what other expenses come what with other, caring for these animals? Well, other than the tank itself, so there's all of the stuff that needs to go into the tank, so. No, more of, so yeah, there's like the lighting and the substrate and the plants, like depending on how you wanna set it up. But what about in terms of maintaining care for the animals? Um, biggest is food. Um, and then above and beyond that is replacement of kind of the stuff that's in their tank that's not permanent. So like law right now is on paper. paper. Um, that needs to be replaced really frequently. The animals that we have that are in bios, um, their substrate lasts an awful lot longer than paper, but it doesn't last forever, right? Occasionally you'll you need, need to, to re -up re it. refresh it mm -hmm. and a little bit more. Um, clean up crews. Clean up crews, stuff. yeah, isopods. Um, so all of these, she's so cozy. She's just curled up on my shoulder. So all of these things are decently easy to project um, and plan for, but what about unplanned expenses? So medical is top of mind for us this week. Yeah. We had a little bit of a- um, We had a, an emergency yeah. situation. Um, if you wanna know more about kind of what's going on with that, there is a private Facebook group. I'll leave the link on this video or down in the description below so you can you know, feel free to join that right. if you wanna get a little bit more information. Um, but yeah, we had some last minute emergency vet expenses, sometimes those come up. Um, highly recommend finding and creating a relationship with a experienced exotics vet when you start caring for these animals because you just never know when you're going to need to, you know, rely on their expertise for something. Yeah. Time is another one. Um, so time it takes to clean and care for and you know provide any additional enrichment that any of the animals might be needing on any given day mm -hmm. is another big factor in terms of what animals we keep and care for. And yeah, I think. I think those are the big three, right? Time, space, and money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you run out of any of those things, it's gonna mean a less you know, good life and experience for your animal. Um, and potentially more stress for you. Um, so kind of thinking through, do I have the time, space, and money to add to my animal family is, is always a really, 
really good exercise to go through, just think through it all. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and again, that's gonna be very dependent on species, you know, how big they get, how interactive they are, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. There are definitely more kind of lower maintenance snakes than the animals that we care for. However, I don't believe there's really such a thing as a true low maintenance animal. Regardless of what animals you keep and care for, they are going to need care to ensure that they are healthy and thriving. Right. And even All right, I think that's it in terms of the, the majority of the reasons behind the reasons we keep the number of animals we keep and care for. Um, yeah, if you want to, my fingers on the, if you want to have like a tour of each individual animal in our care, let us know if that's something you want to see and we can definitely work on putting that together that will take a little bit more time because we need to align like feeding schedules and shedding schedules and all of that stuff. So, but yeah, if that is something you want to see, kind of every single animal that we care for in one video, comment below, let us know. And otherwise we will catch you on next, the flip side. next week, also known as the flip side. She finally decided it was time to go back in. Kind of. I'll be here for a while. Your butt's in the way. I can't close your door. She knows. I did all of this filming before having coffee. I haven't had any yet. Go us. We're having the day by the horns. We're either impressive or really stupid.